Well, I'm just making up the connector for the solar now. So with these, get a butane torch, get your solder. And basically just heat this and melt some solder into it and then drop your wire in so it helps to get a better connection. Then you can crimp it afterwards, put heat shrink on and everything. Just helps to hold it in because they're a circular connector and they're not like the other ones where you know, these ones have got a bit of a tab at the back, which is kind of a viewpoint for knowing your wires right at the end. And it also means when you crimp, it kind of crimps flat as well. Whereas with these, they don't have that. So solder's a really good idea. Always remember to check as well, how much wire you're gonna have exposed afterwards. Might cut this back a little bit because I really don't want any to be exposed in this and then we can heat shrink it after. Now I've just done the solder now. You can see I just pulled that out and I had enough to actually pull it out of the vise without pulling it out of the socket. So it just goes to show that if you solder them it does give you a better connection overall. And with the Anderson plugs they're actually really easy to fit. So once you've got your thing here, you actually be able to see on one side it's basically flat the other side it's kind of got a bevel, so it's a bit, got a bit of a lip. Might be hard to see in the camera, there we go. So basically that's the top side of your Anderson plug, which will be the one that has your positive and negative marked on it. Make sure you get this right, so basically all you do, push it in, on the positive side, and you should hear a clip. Uh, this one didn't clip, but if you look at the end there, you can actually see on this side, it's come through all the way, and if I try and pull it back, I can't, so it's in there the way it should be. Got a wiring coming up through here. So the battery, I've still got to think a little bit about how we're going to mount that down. We have actually put in a brace underneath the floor just to support a bit more of the weight. Um, just because this, this false floor now, this one, is on the gas struts. When it lifts up, we can't really have that bolted down against this or anything, obviously, because it's got to be allowed to move. Um, that Anderson plug is actually just for solar because for the rest of the things, I'll probably put in a, a fuse box to run them, but we're practically only gonna run in the back here, maybe an inverter in the fridge. There won't be really too much going on because we'll have the rest happen in the, um, in the camper. So yeah, it's turned out all right. Um, took the fuse out, so this is another good thing, because we're gonna have effectively two dual battery systems going, one in the car, one in the, in the camper. It just means that easy way to sort of stop one from operating is to pull the fuse so you don't have any load. So you can just let the battery run because 100 amp hour battery with a really low load will at least give you, you know, maybe two or three days out of a fridge. So we can just alternate between the two batteries rather than having our alternator just smash through the charge on one. Um, yeah, what this is for is solar. So the Red Arc BCDC 1240D lets you have either vehicle input or solar input at the same time. So it's basically got a floating point charge and an MPTT controller, so it will actually sense when there's sun, when you've got a load coming from your solar panel. And the other advantage is you don't need a regulator on your solar panel. So if you ever put one of these in and you wonder why, oh, my solar's not working, you don't need a regulator. The, the controller itself is the regulator to actually charge the battery. So take your regulator out of the um, circuit and you'll find it'll work perfectly fine. And this is the interesting part, so it might be a bit hard for me to do by myself, but... So still get access to everything under here. I'm holding it up at the moment because the struts aren't enough, and then we want to let it back down. If I didn't have one hand, I wouldn't have dropped it, but you know. So basically that whole floor can lift up, so it still gives us access to the spare wheel. But the advantage is we've been able to use, basically still have all of this space on this side. The battery compartment and everything's still accessible when you lift it up, so we can still take it out, get access to the jack. But we haven't had to compromise by, most of the time on these, you've actually got to lose basically the inside of here in terms of your floor space, because that's normally where you'd put a rail or where you'd actually bolt down to. So the way that we've done it, we've actually kind of gained floor space, which is really cool. So there's a few more things that we're going to need to do. So one 
is the um, basically a tray for the battery or something to secure the battery down, and then the next thing will be the electronics to run the fridge and everything in the back of the car. So, oh, it's actually turned out all right. It's a fair bit longer than what we thought, but we just ran into some snags along the way. So, some things I'd probably recommend. One, if you have a pedestal drill, it's heaps easy to, to drill through steel. Wasted so much time just destroying drill bits trying to drill through the steel plates that we had. Um, the other one is probably just plan out where, you, where you're going to put things as well a bit better. That would have saved a bit more time for us. Uh, if you can as well, laying out a bit of cardboard in the back of your tailgate, if you've got something big enough, you can kind of draw along where you want the contours of your fourth floor to be. The problem that we found was when we lifted up the floor, it actually hit the, the 12 volt socket that's in the rear. So we thought basically by you know tracing along the end of the, the back of the car, we'd be okay. But the problem that we found was when you lift it up on the struts, the 12 volt socket juts out a little bit. So we ended up having to take it out and just adjust it a little bit. So basically just cut another notch out so that when it lifts up, it can actually lift up on the inside there. Um, some other things, where the BCDC charger is, it's actually, if you're in a, uh, I think a HSE discovery, they actually have a subwoofer speaker there, so you can't really use that cavity. You can, if you wanted to use, there's normally a foam insert that sits above everything. We've taken that out because there's just no need for having it there anymore, and it would have kind of got in the way of a few things that we've ran. So now that we've done what we've done, we can probably even use some of that area for storage if we really wanted to. I don't think we will. It'll just be where the charger will be if we need to have a look at it. The last thing is, if you are going to use a BCDC charger, uh, a lot of people will say things like, oh, just turn smart charge off. You don't need to. You just need to wire them the way that Red Art says to wire them, and it's perfectly fine. So the other way that you can do it, which is kind of the lazier way, if you're in a car that's not a Discovery and doesn't have access to, like you would have saw earlier in the video, the basically the accessory wire off the 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter socket. In some other cars, to find an accessory wire can be a bit of a pain, so a lot of people don't bother with it. They take their cars back to a dealership and get the smart charge turned off. So I know with Ford Rangers they can do that. And what it then allows you to do is just go back to using your standard VSR system and you don't have to worry about doing the blue wire anywhere. Um, other things, the orange wire for the BCDC charger. In the book, it actually just says, you know, this is the maximum voltage depending on the way that you've actually wired that orange, uh, orange wire. Now, if you've got the, spe the specs of your battery, then you can just use that to figure out which profile you need to use. I actually found on Red Art's website, so not in the manual, but on their website, it had, you know, profile A is what you would use for an AGM battery. I think profile B is for lead acid, and I think maybe C was lithium or can't remember exactly but profile a for most people is going to be the one to use which is basically the orange wire does not get this just doesn't get connected anywhere so nothing to worry about on that side but even if you do need it connected it's normally really simple so it's either you know you, you hook it up to an active or you hook it up to your neutral or your, your negative like your chassis ground so we'll keep you informed along the way but that's where we've got up to today and at least now um we can access that spare wheel oh, the the ply is holding the weight and draw and everything pretty well um, when we put the fridge on it'll probably help a little bit more as well just to distribute the weight better because at the moment you know we've got basically all the weight on one side of the 